This is Nitro Game Injection. Welcome, everybody, to Nitro Game Injection. I'm your host, Kyle JCRB, and I'm joined by a very special, special guest this week. The return of the one and only Ian Flynn, the Bumble King himself. Welcome to Nitro Game Injection. I'm Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is the actual host of the show, Kyle JCRB Cross. I'm here, yay! Yay! <laughs> Indeed. Uh, if you guys weren't aware, I also uh, host a show with Ian that's a different show from this one called The Bumblecast, where we talk about nerdy stuff. Like, uh, well, for example, like Mega Man X. Have we talked about Mega nope. Man X on the show before? Probably. We've talked about Mega Man Very badly, Mega. yes. We kind of meandered around that topic uh, for 30 minutes and then said, oh, God, let's just go to the Q&A. <laughs> well, there's a lot to cover. 
<laughs> but we do have we do have a love for Mega Man and Mega Man X, of course. Because hey, of course. I mean, you were the writer of the uh, Mega Man comics for Archie Comics for several years, so you have a kind of a history with the franchise. You've actually put your mark directly on the franchise, which is more than I can say. <laughs> I've never worked on anything <laughs> Mega Man related in my life except this show. I am and... officially a footnote in a much larger franchise. <laughs> sure, but you at least have a Wikipedia page. <laughs> yeah, which, varying on what day you look at it, may or may not be accurate. <laughs> may or may not be <laughs> well, edited by someone who isn't quite happy that I exist. It, it, it's fun to watch. go back and look at the edits. How, how often do you go back and look at that? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. Whenever the idea strikes me, it's like, oh yeah, I have that. Last Did somebody time... vandalize it again? Let's go see. <laughs> Last time I saw it, it was a while ago, and it was fine. There was, it was very out of date at the time I looked at it. I don't know if it's been yeah. updated since then, but I don't know. Either way, uh, for some reason, you would seem to attract a uh, certain hate mob, I guess. Very yeah. small. <laughs> But they are tenacious. <laughs> Indeed they are. And I guess you have to uh, give them credit for that. Except you don't. You don't have to even if you don't want to. It's fine. I I'm an entertainer at heart. And entertainers provide material for people to be distracted from the big things in life. The trials and tribulations. The things that keep us up at night. It, it gives you a minute to just relax and forget about the real world. And <laughs> if that manifests in long YouTube diatribes talking about the conspiracy that <laughs> I hate the Freedom Fighters? Sure! You know what? Yes. You're doing that for fun. You're. It makes you happy. It's technically not hurting anybody. Because but we should I, also... I, I'm happy to be of service. We should also mention that you've been the uh, writer of the Sonic the Hedgehog comics for oh, well over a decade at this point. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, I don't know. What else have you done, Ian? What have you done? <laughs> you, you should be held accountable. <laughs> I did a fair amount of Ninja Turtle stuff. Yes. Um, I've written for the Sonic Boom TV series. I've uh, got a website, bumbleking.com, which has everything I've done because I can't remember it all off the top of my head. <laughs> I can't either, because you've done so much. You're a very busy guy. You've done yeah, work. For, yeah. you've, done, you've done work for Archie. You've done work for DC Comics. You've done work for um, who else? Dark Horse. There we go. That's the one I was thinking of. Dark Horse, IDW, of course. IDW. Yep. So you have uh, you have a long history of uh, of this stuff. So. I figured you'd be a good one to have on as we celebrate the 25th anniversary of Mega Man X. The North American yeah, 25th Mega anniversary. Man. What's Mega that? Mega Man was a delight to write. I miss that book. I miss it too. I really do. And I really wanted to see progression to hopefully like an X series or something. There was... You, you've seeded that idea kind of early on. And uh, I was looking forward to more of that so a little sad and I, the objective i had with the Mega Man book was basically to have it with the mindset of the entire franchise in mind not just classic and the classic book obviously was what we the classic story i should say was the focus of the book but because you can draw a pretty straight line from classic to x to zero to zx to legends I wanted to make the series so that you could, if you know, we managed to run for 40 years and go that <laughs> entire route, you could actually see every individual building block come together and build to something grand and marvelous, and we didn't get to make a match for it. Yeah, I know. You did get to some weird Mega Man offshoots, though, but you never got to Mega Man Soccer either. I'm very, uh, I'm very man, sad. About I, I knew that. exactly what I wanted to do for that, man. Okay. I wanted to do a free comic book day issue. I wanted to play it completely <laughs> straight and do it like this super intense 
anime where every, where the stakes are through the roof, but it's just soccer, and then <laughs> the whole thing turns out to be kind of like a robo fever dream because Mega Man's processor processor was overclocked or something. <laughs> nice. So you wanted to do like a Captain Tsubasa style <laughs> soccer yeah. soccer ma soccer manga? <laughs> that would be pretty freaking amazing. <laughs> Well, all right. Well, before we get too far into just going down the rabbit hole of talking about Mega Man, what do you think about getting <laughs> to some music, Ian? I should have mentioned that the song we started off with was uh, none other than Wash It All with Intruder Alert from Mega Man X2, featured on Overclocked Remix's album Maverick Rising, which will be a huge uh, part of the playlist for this week because uh, there's a ton of good songs on it. And uh, I forgot just how good it was because there's some really great stuff. And uh, I did the listening party for that album a few years ago when it released. So, And by a few, I mean like, what, six, seven, eight, however many years <laughs> ago it was, 2012. So I've done, I've done a lot of this stuff before, but you know what? I don't care because it's all good. And we're here to celebrate Mega Man X's 25th anniversary. So uh, January 1994 when we saw the original Mega Man X released in North America. Came out in December of uh, 1993 in Japan. December 17th, actually, which I think is when the first game originally came out as well. So it was like a... Mega Man X was sort of an anniversary celebration unto itself, maybe? I'm not sure. But I know it's December. We can go deeper. The Mega Man Inception never ends. <laughs> I know it was in December when the original Mega Man came out. So it, it's uh, it kind of all comes around. Mega Man is a very, for some reason, a very December centric uh, release, which is a little late for a holiday release. But hey, whatever. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into some more music though from Rockman. Starting us off, this is an official arrangement. Uh, officially licensed by Capcom from the album We Are Rockmen 2. This is Doppler Stage 1 from Mega Man X3. Keep it here. This is Nitro Game Injection.
right, there was a Taiki with Theme of Zero, Rockman X Series Remix. A Rockman X Series Mix. Sorry, not Remix. Habits to call them remixes, Ian. <laughs> That's a, a medley of Themes of Zero from the Dojin album Rockbuster. And uh, that's about all I know about it. <laughs> the comments for this song uh, in the ID3 tag say, Dojin from Mick Carls. I don't know who Mick Carls is, but thank you, Mick Carls. <laughs> uh, what happens when you do the fusion dance between a McDonald's and a Carl Jr.'s? Yeah, that's it right there. It's perfect. That might be what it is. Before that, we had Will Rock with a uh, very very much Final Countdown inspired remix called Countdown to Infinity covering uh, Mega Man X5 and Mega Man X6. That's featured on uh, Overclocked Remix's album Maverick Rising. I was going to say Maga, Ma Maggie Man? I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> Mag Magverick. Either way, great song there from Will Rock. I've played it many times on the show before. But it's just so good. And, I mean, who doesn't love a good uh, homage to the final countdown? Exactly. Yes. It actually fits pretty well for uh, for the themes he went with. And that was actually featured on the uh, Mega Man X... Jeez, um, what was the name of that freaking competition? Is the um, Sigma remix call it? No, 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 no. It's a Maverick remix gauntlet, I think. Something like that. I'm totally forgetting the name. It was an overclocked remix forum competition and then became a track on Maverick Rising and then became a track on OCR. So, yeah, that song has been through a lot, apparently. <laughs> and starting us off there was none other than Rockmen with a Doppler Stage 1 from Mega Man X3. Man, Mega Man X3, Ian. Have you, have you have much experience with Mega Man X3? Not a ton. My my claim to fame within the Mega Man franchise, aside from <laughs> writing the comic, is my stunningly bad <laughs> gaming ability with it. No, don't worry. Uh, I got the same problem. <laughs> so uh, I I tried. I couldn't get through X one. Never got around to X three. I, I'm more an appreciative of the lore than I am an experienced gamer. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I managed to kind of work my way through the original Mega Man X with the help of some uh, <laughs> some ex some external help, one might say, in the form of save states. Uh, <laughs> same with Mega Man X2. I got up to Mega Man X3, but never quite finished it. But, man, I do have to say that I love me the soundtrack of Mega Man X3. It's really good. Uh, composed by one of the composers of the original Castlevania as well, Kanuyo Yamashita. Yeah. Yeah, so... And it, it's weird because it doesn't really sound anything like Castlevania. But, I mean, obviously she has a lot more of a... A lot wider range than just doing Castlevania music. So, some good stuff in there. You got, like, uh, Doppler Stage 1 is my favorite for sure. But Neon Tiger, which, of course, sounds like a Guns N' Roses song. And then you got Blast Hornet, which is also awesome. And the opening stage is really good, too. And hey, what a coincidence. All three of those songs, except for Doppler. Doppler's not in this. But a coincidence is that uh, this next song coming up is actually also going to have uh, opening stage, Blast Hornet stage, and Neon Tiger stage. Because it's a remix from Joshua Morse. It's a Mega Man X3 medley, also featuring the password theme, which I do not remember. <laughs> <laughs> I do not remember the, I do not remember the password theme from Mega Man X3. Maybe this song will jog my memory. So why not? Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's take another music break. We'll just we'll just whip whip through this real quick, Ian. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Absolutely. You don't go slow in Mega Man. Uh kinda. You, you, Mega Man X. You don't go slow in Mega Man X. It's a little faster. It's not as fast as Sonic though, but that's okay. You gotta go slightly faster than the original Mega Man. Let's let's say that. You don't Dash go. Dashing, you jump and you're shooting. You're not plotting. Go go go. Jump and shoot, Hit the man. Button. Play the music. Jump and shoot, man. Do it. 
Keep it here. Do it. NGI. Bye.
All right, here's hoping the audio doesn't break this time. (laughs) (laughs) I'm definitely not used to having a co-host on this show, so with the way I do things, the audio kind of has to freak out sometimes, and yeah, it's it's strange. Anyway, if you're listening to this after the fact, you didn't even notice, so congratulations. You have won the the uh, the game of listening later, I guess. I don't know. What game did they win? Good shooting never went Maverick. Didn't happen. You can't prove it. Nope, nope. No, no Maverick virus here in this show. Nope, not at all. Nope, never. That's not, that's totally why we played a song called Vile Needs to Galvanize. (laughs) Remixing the original Mega Man X uh, from Blind. None other than Blind. Another great run from uh, Mega Man X Maverick Rising. And uh, that particular track, actually that whole block, was uh, very much electronic based. We're, we're kind of, uh, I'm kind of, I tried to group the songs together and tried not to do so much, like, you know, rock, even though rock is kind of in rock man's name. But, you know, I, I, gotta, I gotta vary things up a little bit. It's only fair. Before that, we had Sir Nuts and Usa with Laser Power from Mega Man X2. Uh, that was an overclocked remix track that actually came out in 2017 uh, from the Mega Man X Sigma Fortress remix gauntlet in 2015. So that song was two years old at the time it came out on OCR. Go figure. <laughs> and uh, starting us off with Joshua Morse with Sting from Mega Man X3, which uh, went from very drum and bass heavy Blast Hornet remix to a uh, very funky and a uh, more relaxed vibe later on in the song. Oh well, that's Joshua for you. He, 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 he does that. He can go from one end of the spectrum to the other. He's pretty good at that. So. Oh man. Jeez. I'm trying to think. Did you ever play Mega Man X when you were younger, Ian? No, I was a Genesis kid, so I didn't have a lot of access to the Mega Man games in general. Mm-hmm. Um, for the longest time, I thought it was a Nintendo franchise, and it's like, oh, well, don't even need to try to look into it, because I don't have access to it. Mm-hmm. And then, much later in life, learning I was an idiot and missed out on Wily Wars. Well, Wily Wars never came out in in, uh, in America. Did it not? No. Nope. Well, actually, I take that back. It came out on the Sega channel. Did you have the Sega channel? I did not have the Sega channel. Well, then that explains that. (laughs) But yeah, it was only released as a digital download on the Sega channel, which it's funny to say a digital download back in 1993, 92, whenever it came out. Oh, that phone line was screaming the entire time. Yeah. No, it had a cable connection, I think. Interesting. Really? Yeah, there's like a cable connection on the back of it, a coaxial cable connection on the back. I very distinctly remember seeing it in a magazine at the time and being like, I want that, and then never getting it. And then it died. <laughs> it pro- I'd probably died not long after that ad, actually. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty crazy. The uh, the early days of digital download. Sega was always kind of ahead of the curve on that front. Um. Nintendo, of course, had a fairly successful one in Japan with the uh, Satella view for the Super Nintendo. And I think there was even one for the Atari, like one of the Atari consoles. It might have been the 2600. There was some weird, there was some weird stuff going on back then. Like even back then, people were like, we can use phone lines to transfer data and we can transfer games over that. And like, well, that's smart. Too bad no one can afford it. <laughs> And too bad after all this time, streaming game content remains out of reach. True. We, um... I'm trying to think. Jeez, what was it? We've we've definitely come pretty far, though. And, uh... Oh, man. There was something, another Mega Man X-related thing. I started with Mega Man 7 and Mega Man X. Those were my first two Mega Man games. At about the same time, because I think they came out pretty close to each other, and I had friends that had both of them, and I I still have a soft spot for Mega Man 7 because of that, I think, more than anything else. It's a pretty good game, but I think people, 
And people kind of unfairly trash on it, because it's still... I still like it. I still like 7. But Mega Man X was, like, on a whole nother freaking level. <laughs> I couldn't even... I couldn't even handle the amazingness that was Mega Man X. Especially Storm Eagle. I'm like, holy crap, this music is amazing. <laughs> My mind is being blown apart by these guitars. So, yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> that was my story with Mega Man X, which uh, was a very rocking soundtrack. It's like, holy crap. It's like, I, I didn't know guitars ha were a thing in this, but they are. And I, I like them. I like guitars. That's when I found out I like guitars, Ian. Probably. It's a Super <laughs> Nintendo. Except probably not, but pretty close to it. <laughs> you gotta appreciate X's design, the first game at the very least. And oh yeah! How quickly it sets its tone apart from the original, and how it is constructed to teach you all the crazy new moves you can do with X versus Rock. Oh yeah, I mean that's been that's been something that people have definitely talked about. It's been well established at this point that Mega Man X's opening stage is a stroke of genius, and one of the most well designed, probably one of the most well designed games of all time. But especially that opening stage. And uh, just the way it like uses also just the plot, just the story. And using Zero as sort of like the character you, you want to become as you progress through the game. Gives you sort of, gives you a player motivation and a character motivation all in one. Works pretty well. It's crazy. Why can't they design a good game like that anymore? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kid, I kid. Although Mega Man 11, I don't know. I'm still really not feeling Mega Man 11. How are, what, how are, what are your feelings on Mega Man 11 again? Have you had the chance? Well, to I mean, play it? to me, it, to me, it felt like an authentic Mega Man game in that I, you know, hit a wall very early oh, on and had to well, yeah. go to super easy baby mode. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely so that. To me, to me, Mega Man 11 felt like an actual Mega Man game. Like to me, the the timing of it felt right. The shots felt right. Everything just felt authentic. The only thing that was really lacking was the music. Oh yes, the music was a, this a most disappointing part of it. I think it was I mean, very it wasn't bad. It's just it very kind of there. It's just kind of middling. Yeah, it's just kind of not great. It doesn't really... There were a couple of songs that I liked, especially in remix form. Some people covered, and I can't remember what they were. I think Pump Man might be one of them. That was a pretty good song, but... Unless Pump Man is a different... I might be thinking... That might be Mega Man 10 boss. Yeah, I think so. Oh, jeez. <laughs> there is one boss from Mega Man 11 that had a really good song that I cannot remember the name of. Uh, but... Yeah, I was kind of disappointed in the soundtrack, but overall I think the game was a good reintroduction and sort of return to form for Mega Man, so hopefully it's something they can build on with more more sequels, if if they do more, which I hope they do. And maybe they'll return to Mega Man X at some point. I'd love to see a SNES style uh, Mega Man X game again. Yeah. Sort of like how they did with 9 and 10 for the uh, for Classic. Well, even if they go for a more updated look like they did with 11, yeah, but, to me, 11 felt visually like it looked more like a Mega Man game than 7 did to me. Really? I, I just, I feel like the sprite work for 7 was so bulbous and cartoony. Whereas 11 to me felt like it was sleek and more befitting of the Mega Man style. Mm -hmm. Although that may be very subjective, I just I felt like it looked like an appropriate update visually. And if X were to take the similar route, I would be perfectly happy with that. Yeah, uh, Mega Man X8 used a two and a half D style graphic style quite well, so I wouldn't mind like an updated look to Mega Man X8. I like Mega Man X8 quite a bit. So, um, 
Oh, jeez. Something else I was gonna mention. Um. Oh, Mega Man 11. The other thing I didn't really care for was just the sound, the sound design, the sound effects. Like all of the, all of the uh, unique and uh, sort of iconic sound effects were just gone replaced with some stuff that wasn't super great like Mega Man shooting uh, shooting lemons doesn't make the right sound it's all wrong <laughs> <laughs> I mean you could update it a little bit but like to completely change it the sound is just completely different and it's it, it's a shame because it's very much like a more muted sound design I don't like it but that's not to say Mega Man 11 is a terrible game. I'm just hoping... No, no, no. Like you said, it's a good foundation to rebuild the franchise off of. Right. And that's what I'm hoping for. So. All right. Well, are we ready to get into some more Mega Man X3 remixes, Ian? Because I've had three blocks in a row where we've started with Mega Man X3 remixes. <laughs> 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 this one, this block is getting a little bit more chip y so we're getting into uh, a remix from Savaged Regime, which uh, is totally not an anagram of Sega Mega Drive. Nope, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is a remix from Mega Man X3. This is Volt Catfish in Sega Genesis style, which uh, is really freaking good, especially because it's Savage Regime, a.k.a. Gecko Yamori, for you uh, old school fans out there. If you like... Uh, if you know OCR, OC Remix from way back in the day, Gecko Yamori was a pretty big name back then. And uh, he's still around, and this is what he's doing. So let's go ahead and get into it. Keep it here. This is Nitro Game Injection.
that right there was Mega Flare with Rush to Sky Lagoon, remixing the stage select from Mega Man X4 in an NES style. A little bit of a, a little bit of a change of pace there, but still works. Still works as an NES song, I think. Uh, that's the great thing about most Mega Man music is you could make it like sound like a Sega Genesis. It sounds sounds really good, or you could make it sound like a make Mega Man X music sound like a NES and it still sounds really good or make it sound like a Game Boy as they did for the uh, two Mega Man Extreme games and still sounds pretty good so I like Mega Man Extreme's soundtrack did you play either of those games Ian? I did not and I really wish I had because when I was researching it for uh, some of the tie-in stuff it's like this looks really bonkers wild but it sounds neat as well I mean X and Zero fight a witch in the digital realm? What? <laughs> Why? Okay. There is some cool stuff in there. Um, I know the first game is kind of like a remake-ish of the of Mega Man X, and I think some Mega Man X two as well. But it, it's it's kind of a weird amalgamation of things that uh, uh, I I kind of like. And Iris is a navigator for. One of them or both of them, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so that could have been interesting, an interesting thing to explore too, rather than just having her show up randomly at the beginning of Mega Man X Four. Like, who is this? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Zero screams, "What am I fighting for?" When she dies, and like, I don't know who this person is. <laughs> oh man, uh. that and she's interesting in that. In the end, she's still unapologetically racist against the humans. I mean, everyone is like, Oh no, she died, it's so sad, poor Zero, how tragic. And it's like, but she still would have been okay to watch the humans get dunked on. Which I think is an interesting take on your female support character. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely a very interesting thing they could have could have been explored if you had had the chance to write a comic about it. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, well. Before that song, though, we had Theory of N with a track from Mega Man X2 called Sting Chameleon uses Bubble Crab's very essence as a cheap bathroom product. (laughs) From Overclocked Remix. (laughs) I always love needlessly long song titles. (laughs) Don't you, Ian? Just, just just keep going. Just keep going. Just make it super duper long for no reason. It's fun. We can't kind of get away with it anywhere else. True, true. And hey, Bubble Crab theme. Bubble Crab theme is really good. I think I think people kind of skip over Mega Man X2's soundtrack for some reason. I don't know why. It's really freaking good. Uh, and of course, you know, that was the, the inception of Green Biker Dude. So that game's got a lot of stuff going for it. And he was truly the hero that we deserved. <laughs> but sadly, not the one we needed. Not the one we got. Uh, before that, starting us off with Savaged Regime with Volt Catfish YM 2612 cover from Mega Man X3. The YM 2612 being the Yamaha sound chip used in the Sega Genesis. That's really about it. It's pretty bro- pretty. Pretty basic, but hey, Savage Regime, great stuff. I always recommend looking him up, especially if you want to hear uh, practically any video game song in uh, Genesis style. He does some really good work, so definitely go check him out. All right, are we ready to rock in? Are we ready to go back into the rock? Are we ready to rock, oh. man? I am, are you? I'm always ready to rock. That's what this show's usually about. And uh, this next block is full of the rock, man. X. Well, then let's get this avalanche going. All right. Well, first, we're starting off with uh, Storm Eagle, because I got to play some Storm Eagle. <laughs> this is probably the most legendary song from the game. <laughs> Definitely up there. And uh, this one comes to us courtesy of Toxic Ex Eternity. Storm Eagle. That's all it's called. 
that's all you need. Keep it here. This is NGI.
right there was The Rockman yet again with another one of my favorite tracks from them. That was Armor Armage Stage. Uh, probably more colloquially known as Armored Armadillo. But sure, we'll call it Armor Armage. Why not? <laughs> it's <laughs> I, kind of fun to say as you choke on the word. Armor Armage. I don't even know if that's the correct pronunciation. I'm just going... I'm just going based on how uh, how it looks. It's probably like Armor Armagi or something. Armargi. Whatever. Know, armage sounds like something. Armarge. It's not an homage. It's Armarge. It's whatever. It's an armadillo. <laughs> you gotta have the dillo in there, man. You can't have no dillo. You gotta have a dillo. I don't know why. Otherwise, what's the dillio? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> before that was uh, a song I've never heard a remix before in my life, and uh, which is kind of a shame. I'd say even more than any other game in the series, uh, X5 gets passed over for the most part, remix-wise. That was Krzysztof Szowakowski with uh, Squid Adler, or Volt Kraken, from Mega Man X5, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the the localization of <laughs> Mega Man X5 is very very interesting. <laughs> um, Ian, did did are you aware of the story of why Mega Man X5's bosses are named after members of Guns N' Roses? I know I've heard it, but I have forgotten it in my old age. Okay, well. I have to give you the story because it's funny. First of all, you know, are you familiar with the PBS show The Big Comfy Couch? In passing. Okay. Uh, you know the lady who's like the main character on that show? She was also a uh, localizer for Capcom. Worked on okay. Resident, Resident Evil 2 and Mega Man X5. Apparently her husband is a big fan of Guns N' Roses. So, <laughs> as a, I guess as a, I don't know, a tribute to him or just for fun, she put, she used uh, Guns N' Roses member names as the uh, Maverick names in Mega Man X5 for the, uh, for the localization. So, it's very weird to think like, oh, the big comfy couch girl. <laughs> named <laughs> the is the reason why we had Duff McWhalen. Yeah, Duff McWhalen and Squid Adler and a Axel the Red and whatever other weird names we got in there. Grizzly Slash, which is actually a pretty cool name. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. Or we got Izzy Glow. Like, what? What is that? <laughs> or a the stretch? Or the Skyver? <laughs> Or Matrix instead of Burn Dino Rex, which Burn Dino Rex is a lot cooler. Let's not, let's not, let's not mince words. <laughs> if you're if you're going to have a, a T Rex, having it on fire makes it instantly even better. Now, when we had them <laughs> show up as expendable boss fights in the second major Sonic Mega Man crossover. Uh huh. As entertaining as those names are, I feel like they are a distraction from who the characters are. So I went with the direct translated names. So you had like title McElveen and stuff. And when the story came out, readers were saying, well, why didn't you use the English version of those? And I said, there were English versions of those. And apparently there was a re-translation of the entire X5 Maverick group. It's in the 25th anniversary book that I have. I just didn't know that it was in there. And uh, Capcom never thought to correct me on it. Oh, well, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> it's not a big deal. But you do have Crescent Grizzly, which is kind of cool, I guess. Grizzly Slash is a better name, though. It, it is. It is. But then you got Duff McWhalen, which is Tidal Whale, which is... I, I don't know. It's all right. Better than Duff it's Mc... Almost, Wave, almost a pun on Tidal Wave. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, Volt Kraken instead of Squid Adler is a lot better. I'm oh, gonna, absolutely. I'm going to say, yeah. Pretty much anything that has Kraken in it. Yeah, Kraken is a cool word. Uh, Shining Firefly? Eh, better than Izzy Glow, I think. You got a little bit of G Gundam in there. Yeah. Instead of a Shining Finger. Spiral Pegasus, that's pretty cool. That's instead awesome. Of, instead of the Skyver, which is what? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> And then Burn Dinorex instead of Matrix. Also, way more awesome as Burn Dinorex. No competition. Yeah, and then Axel the Red versus Spike Rose Red. Spike Rose Red wins that one. And it also helps to minimize confusion because we end up getting a character named Axel later, which I have to wonder might be uh, <laughs> inspired by another Guns N' Roses inspired thing. <laughs> Maybe. Or just happens to be called Axel. Who knows? It's not like it's an unheard of name, but I know uh, Guns N' Roses, at least for a little while, was fairly big in Japan, so it's possible. And then Dark Necrobat is the last one. Or Dark Dizzy. (laughs) No, Necrobat. That that one's dumb. That one's dumb. And then we got Rangda Bangda W. Which I think is actually the actual name from the original game, but of course we cannot uh, we cannot talk about Mega Man X Five and not mention the coup de gras of uh, of the soundtrack, which would be X versus Zero. It's kind of a freaking legendary song, and the only song anybody ever remixes from X Five, which makes me sad, because there's good stuff in there too. Other good stuff. So, but X vs. Zero is definitely one of those. It's also one of those cool moments where, like, you've been waiting the entire series to see the two go at it, and they finally <laughs> do. It, it's definitely that, uh, it's that climax point of the X series that I think that, like, having X6 through X8 kind of negates, sadly. <laughs> yeah. Because X5 was supposed to be the ending point, but obviously it was not. So. Instead, we end with brand new character helping our mainstays fight a bunch of Sigma clones on a moon base. <laughs> well, at least the soundtrack to that. One of these days, good. Sigma. One of these days. Wee, 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 wee. Pow! Straight to the moon. Oh man, you should have put that. You should have put that in the book. I don't know where. <laughs> I don't know where. But anyway, Toxic X Eternity started us off that block, by the way, with Mega Man X Storm Eagle, which is a freaking great song. So, speaking of great songs, shall we keep on rocking and rolling, Ian? We absolutely must. Okay. Well, we're, we're not getting too rocky on this block. Things are things are calming down a little bit, but there's still some there's still some fun to be had. So let's get started with some Virez from Mega Man X2 Overdrive Ostrich Stage, which also I don't know why, but I love Overdrive Ostrich, especially the name. It's probably just the alliteration that I like, but I don't know. It's it's actually one of those uh, boss battles that doesn't take place in a boss room. It's another one of those, like Storm Eagle. Yeah. Which I think helps set it apart. But uh, it helps that the stage also has some great music. So let's go ahead and get into a remix of it called Dusty Dune Devil. Keep it here. This is Nitro Game Injection. <laughs>
Right there was Dig a Dis with Put Your Guns On from Mega Man X5, another one from uh, Maverick Rising. Before that, we had House the Great with Light in the Fortress from his album Houseworks, which might still be one of the uh, one of the seminal uh, fan-made video game remix albums of all time. It's one of the legendary ones. And then starting us off, there was Virez with Dusty Doom Devil from Mega Man X2. And uh, I got a lot of Mega Man X5 on this playlist, actually. <laughs> I guess because I'm like, well, nobody remixes Mega Man X5. And then, I, well, I just looked for Mega Man X5 remixes. Go me! <laughs> <laughs> also, I have to give a shout out to Species in the in the Discord chat. Reminding me of a Rhinoblastoseed. 
and reminding me of how much I miss Larry. <laughs> I'll never forget about Larry, no matter how hard no I try. No matter how hard you try. <laughs> oh, Larry. That guy should come back. I need that guy back. Not to say you're not you're not a great stand in Ian. I think you should have both I think you should have both you on. Both you and him. That's one day. One day. One day. It happened once, I think. Maybe twice. Once or twice. It happened a couple times. Either way. But uh yeah, we're we're cruising through this last half of this show. We've got a lot of music on deck. I still got a ton. I definitely put in a lot more music than uh than usual on this episode because I'm like, man, that remix is good and that remix is good and I gotta have a remix from this game and I gotta have a remix from that game. I gotta it's criminal not to include this one. Exactly. And I've gotta make sure like I have I have at least one song representing each game in the series. Except Mega Man X seven because screw that game. <laughs> <laughs> Except did I even did I put X seven in here? No I didn't. Okay. Well, there's not... There's like one or two Mega Man X7 remixes anyway, so... It's not a big deal. And they're both... They're all from Maverick Rising. So if you want to hear some Mega Man X7 remixes, head on over to uh, maverick.ocremix.org And uh, actually, there's only one remix <laughs> from X7 on that uh, on that album. Which is uh, one more than uh, is necessary, but that's okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Maybe I should give X7 another chance. Should I do that, Ian? No. <laughs> oh, okay. No, you're, you've got a backlog. You might as well move. <laughs> Don't dwell on the mistakes of the past. <laughs> well, I own it, but I've barely played it because it was it was just unplayable when I <laughs> played well, it. Then you have it for your collection... You can say that you have it. Yeah. You don't need to do play it. Yeah, that's true. I don't need to play it. I don't know. If maybe if I get the uh, the Mega Man X collection, the new one that just came out like a year ago or so, or whatever. Maybe I'll give it another shot then. But yeah, I don't know. That's. I think that's the first time that the game got released on PC. So maybe being on PC makes it better. It, it really doesn't. It probably doesn't. Being on PC doesn't fix uh, bad game design. No. And bad <laughs> whatever the heck other problems Mega Man X7 had. <laughs> it had a lot. So, we won't worry about that, though. We'll worry about the rest of the series, because the rest of the series uh, is pretty good, you know? Sometimes there's a... You, gotta, you got the dark spot on... Uh, the dark spot on a long-running series it happens just ask sonic he's got all sorts of black spots all over <laughs> his <laughs> series <laughs> poor sonic but you know he's also got some truly amazing and truly legendary games as well so you know it's not uh it's not all bad heck even mario has some had some darker times they weren't usually made by Nintendo, but still. <laughs> anyway, let's keep on a rolling because I got some more Mega Man X5 remixage to get to. This one comes to us courtesy of DCT. This is another overclocked remix track. Uh, not part of an album, though. Just an older track from 2010. Wow. This song's almost a decade old. Jeez. No, oh, quiet what have, you. What have I been doing with my life? <laughs> playing these songs okay I'm not gonna complain because they're good especially this one this is DCT with Moonlight Vibin keep it here this is Nitro Game Injection
And that right there was Hal C with Insecta Robotica from Mega Man X6. Before that, we had Dark Sword with The Father of All from Mega Man X4. And DCT starting us off with Moonlight Vibin from Mega Man X5. All overclocked remix tracks and all covering the uh, PS1 trilogy of Mega Man X games, even though uh, Mega Man X3 also came out on the PlayStation, but we won't we won't talk about that. We'll ignore that. <laughs> it's pretty much the exact same game as the Super Nintendo version, just with the music replaced with less good versions. <laughs> I mean, they're the same songs, they're just not as good. They don't sound as good. I think if you had a disc-based soundtrack, though, you could get more out of it. Yeah, but uh, even the composer, Kanoyo Yamashita, said like they didn't really like it they didn't do what she would have done because it was a different team that worked on the x3 ps1 soundtrack they just took mm. her compositions and changed them to cd based kind of re-instrumentalized them and uh it's, it's definitely not as good it's a lot more subdued than i think it should be so X4 through X6 uh, definitely fixed that problem. <laughs> so, all right. Well, Ian, uh, from what you've told me, we have reached the end of the line for you. Sadly, I cannot continue. <laughs> it is okay. We salute you and your valiant effort to stick around for the show. I very much appreciate you coming on board. Thank you so much for having. Me. Always glad to have you here. Always glad to be here. And uh, where can the other, where can the fine people, where can the fine folks out there check you out and hear, hear your voice and see your stuff and all that stuff? Head over to bubbleking.com for my con schedule, my release schedule, my body of work, and links to the Bumblecast where you can hear me and Kyle do more radio stuffs. Indeed, we'll talk about more nerdy. Uh, video game related topics or movies or tv uh sometimes we talk about science stuff uh geez what else do we talk about ian sometimes we just talk about like writing uh geez we've talked about all sorts of stuff <laughs> we cover just about everything under the sun that might be even passingly interesting In to you nerdy types out there indeed and uh yeah so don't forget patreon.com slash bumblecast too. You can support the show if you're interested. Uh, that supports both me and Ian, so that's very much appreciated. And uh, I think that's it. So thank you, Ian. If you got anything else you want to mention before you head on out of here. Nope, that's all for me. Y'all enjoy the show. Treat Kyle nice. And we'll see you later. All right. I do. I'm still. St I'm still sticking around. I'm not done yet, guys. I've still got a rock. Still got some more rock going on, and then uh, I've got a slightly more electronic-based block after that, and then finally we'll close out the show. So I've still got uh, still got a little while. So stick around. Keep it tuned here, and uh, let's go ahead and get into some six to sounds featuring Jeff Ball from Mega Man X. Uh, this one's featured on Overclocked Remixes for Everlasting Peace 25 Years of Mega Man album. Officially licensed by Capcom, which is pretty freaking awesome. Capcom really loves the uh, fan community, so I definitely appreciate that. And uh, they did a great job with this album, OCR did. And uh, 6 2, of course, knocks it out of the park as usual, because that's what he does. So, this is Electric Spark. Keep it here. This is Nitro Game Injection.
man. Always like the rock blocks. That was Freddy K with Storm Owl from Mega Man X4. I've been sitting on that song for a little while, wanting to play it on the show. Haven't had the good chance to until now, so glad to uh, finally play that. It's a freaking great song. Like, jeez, don't uh, don't sleep on Storm Owl. Jeez, <laughs> like nobody told me. <laughs> Before that, we added the sole representation of Mega Man X8 on this playlist. That was Primulusa Rosa, a remix of Primrose, uh, by MH, the artist formerly known as Master, Master Hatchet. Dwelling in Duel's staple, a longtime competitor there. This is his first uh, contribution. Or no, it actually, no, it wasn't. What am I saying? Uh, this is one of his contributions to an Overclocked Remix album, but he's still never been posted on OCR. Uh, sadly, so... Kind of a shame. Need more need more MH in my life. Actually, he's been kind of quiet lately. So hopefully he makes makes a grand return someday. Sometimes he shows up in, uh, in DoD, so... I'm sure he'll be back. And starting us off there was Six to Seth and Jeff Ball with Electric Spark from the original Mega Man X. That was uh, from the album For Everlasting Peace, 25 Years of Mega Man. All right, well, you know, I'm kind of rushing through the end here, sorta. Not super rushing, but you know, we're getting we're getting toward the end. I'm starting to shut this thing down a little bit, but I still got one more block of music left before it's truly the end of the show. And, uh, Let's go ahead and get into it. We're switching back to the uh, electronic side. Getting uh, getting our groove on. Our smooth McGroove, as it were, in a little bit. But first, I've got one from Dojin artist Azel. This one comes from the uh, from a remix competition called World Out. A Dojin remix competition. Which, uh, for, as far as I can tell... Um, was like a competition to remix Mega Man songs in three hours. So kind of like a, a time-limited competition. But it was just for fun. I don't think they had like placements or anything. So this is the best info I can find. Um, and it is Google translated. So I don't really have a great... Uh, <laughs> I don't really have a great... Uh, I great uh, knowledge of what this was. But uh, as far as I can tell, it was like a just a fun competition and uh, with a ton of songs. So World Out is what it's called. I don't know why it's called that, but it's called World Out. And uh, this particular track is uh, from the original Mega Man X. Actually, all three of these tracks are from the original Mega Man X. This one's a boomer quanger. Keep it here. This is Nitro Game Injection.
You gotta have your flame mammoth. You can't do a Mega Man X show and not have flame mammoth. <laughs> and uh, Doppler Stage 1 for Mega Man X3 yet again. <laughs> Coming around full circle because we're at the end of the show. And we started off the show with that song, so hey. That was Gario with Red Shifting Drift. Remixing Mega Man X and Mega Man X3. Before that, we had DJ Cutman and Smooth McGroove with Spark Mandrill from Smooth Smooth McGroove Remixed from Game Chops. It's been, uh, been a little quiet on the Smooth McGroove side for a while. I think he made a comeback fairly recently, and he's been releasing some tracks here and there, but uh, he's definitely not quite as uh, not quite as many tracks as he used to do. He used to release stuff like every week. That was a while ago. That was like the Undertale era, I think, a couple of years ago. So, uh, hopefully that guy kind of gets back into the swing of things a bit. But uh, in the meantime, DJ Cutman there, keeping us uh, smoothing and grooving with Smooth McGroove Remixed, which is basically just taking Smooth McGroove's tracks and uh, doing some electronic remixes of them. So remixing remixes. <laughs> So we got DJ Cutman on that album, Hyper Potions, James Landino, uh, Grimecraft, Blind, Ben Briggs, and uh, many, many others, which you can find over at Game Chops uh, on bandcampmusic.gamechops.com, I believe is the URL for that one. Uh, I really like this album, actually. It gets really creative with the use of, uh, with the use of uh, Smooth McGroove's originals, so good stuff. And starting us off, there was Ezel with a Boomer Coiner stage from Mega Man X, or uh, as uh, you might have heard in there a little bit, a little bit of Cheetah Men sneaking in there. A little bit of Cheetah Men. Uh, this was circa 2009, though, so it makes sense there would be some Cheetah Men sneaking in because that's when the Cheetah Men were kind of a big deal. Anyway, guess what? We're at the end of the show. Man. This is one of the longer episodes I've done in recent memory. It will definitely be up there by the time it's over. But I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it. I gotta give a huge thank you to Ian Flynn for coming on board and hanging out with me for a little while, talking some Mega Man and Mega Man X goodness to help celebrate the 25th anniversary of Mega Man X. Uh, I neglected to mention that we actually don't have a an exact release date at least none that has been uh, uncovered we don't have an exact release date for the western release of the original Mega Man X we just know that it was in January of 1994 that's all we know but we don't know <laughs> what day we have an exact day for the Janu or for the Japanese release not for the January release but for the Japanese release but not for North American release. Bit of a shame there, but at least we know it's January, so. Gotta, gotta, got this show in January, so that's good enough for me, right? <laughs> We're about midway through January, so. And uh, speaking of January, actually, uh, next Saturday is my birthday, uh, which means that uh, I think that I won't be doing the show on that day. Instead, I will be doing it a day later on Sunday so uh, just a heads up just so you guys know I will still be doing the show next weekend it just won't be on Saturday it will be on Sunday instead but at the same time as usual at the uh, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time just a day later so and with that that'll close us out I've got three tracks left to play so let me give you the quick rundown on those. First up is a track from another track from Maverick Rising, the Overclocked Remix uh, Mega Man X tribute album. A track from Melody called Affirmation, the ending of Mega Man X5. After that, we have PU Freak with a track called X's Demise from Mega Man X2. Both of these are very piano driven. And then after that, we've got a bonus track. I'm not going to tell you what it is. But it's a good one. And uh, if you're not familiar, you should go check it out. Uh, when I'm, when uh, when the playlist goes up, you should go check out the link of the artist and everything else. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. Because that'll spoil the surprise, I guess. I don't know. 
<laughs> it's fun. It's a song you would hear pretty frequently in the original Mega Man X if you weren't very good at it. Let's just say. I think it's a good ending track to go out on. Uh, but of course, before I get going, I do have to mention KNGI.org. We can find archived episodes of Nitro Game Injection and many other shows, including the show that I do with my good buddy Ian Flynn, who was just on the show earlier, called The Bumblecast. You can also head on over to, to uh, patreon.com slash KNGI, where you can help out KNGI Network, Nitro Game Injection, and me directly. Any bit of your support helps. You get early access to archived versions of the episodes and some other cool stuff, so uh, be sure to check that out. And I think that's it. So, this has been Nitro Game Injection number 340, 25th anniversary of Mega Man X special. Hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, extra long episode. I'll be back next week. Remember, it'll be on Sunday, not Saturday. So, I'll, uh, hopefully I'll post a reminder, let you guys know that uh, it'll be a day later. But it won't be a dollar short. It'll be the same dollars as usual. <laughs> anyway, uh, that'll be it for me. I'm Kyle JCRB. Uh, by the way, also, it's January 19th, 2019. I'm out of here. Bye!